to another episode of... Oh, welcome guys to another episode of Austria, where we are fighting, I guess, the equivalency of World War II, but, I mean, World War I, but it really isn't technically called World War I, and it technically isn't a great war, it's just more me being me. America, you want an alliance. Well, screw you, America. You have such a... I really don't know where we stand, like, I swear, like, at one moment you like us, and at other moments you hate us, and at other moments you like us, and at other moments you hate us. It's such a weird relationship. Anyways, yeah, I basically, I basically resolved to let Germany fall to its fate. It, there's no point in defending that land. And honestly, this war is not really going to bring me much out of it anyway. So, if we lose it, so be it, whatevs, oh well. I personally more care about this war anyways, because in a long-term aspect, the only reason why France can beat me in Germany is the fact they have Russia on their side. But if we can re weaken Russia... We basically destroy France's ability to defeat us, and in future wars, we'll be able to destroy France so easily. So in a long-term prospect, this is way better. And if I, if it does sound like I'm justifying killing off a few thousand Germans for my own selfish means, well, that's exactly what it is, people. <laughs> okay, anyways, um, we do have to pay attention, though, because we now have an international war front. Uh, like I said... <sighs> Dang it, I didn't defend this land quick enough. So now since they're already inside the war, I'm probably gonna have to build some some quick some quick people. Let's see. How's this army comprised of? I need cannons basically. So over here, what I'm going to do is Man, do you guys not know how to like build up proper army? Cause it it really does make me feel sad when like none of you guys have actual oh gosh. This is terrible. You have no Okay, well, we'll use the Korean mobile artillery. Maybe that will help us. We'll basically use that to our advantage. Okay. Um, back over here, though, we basically destroyed all of Yugoslavia's troops. We're just basically fighting this just because we can, I guess. I'm going to go destroy the troops right there. And, yeah, that's going to deconnect them. We basically have all of Yugoslavia broken up. It's just gonna take us some time. So let's see. Let's go have these troops go attack here. 84 stack should be able to beat a 32 stack, especially since you guys. Let's just use everyone. Yeah, this is gonna be a massive slaughter. Oh, this is like the Yugoslavian genocide right here. Look at all these troops we used against them. Gosh. Okay, next, what I need to do is I need to start fighting back the Russians. So I'm gonna start putting troops over there. I really hope Germany doesn't divulge all the troops to go inside. You know, I could... Speaking purely like... Um, reasonably, I could possibly go fight all the troops over here on the French side. And possibly win both wars for both the uh, Germans and the... Uh, French. I mean, it wouldn't be an insanely hard thing to do, it's just, do I want to do that? I mean, this would weaken my greatest enemy, because I consider Germany also a greatest enemy, I guess, I don't know, and just thinking outside, just thinking. Um, you guys go right there. Just basically sit there and build up soldiers, that's all I want you guys to do. That's all you're good at, actually, if I must be honest. But, if... If I was to send in my troops, we could probably make a good push right about here because the French, for some reason the French are really taking it lackadaisically. They're not really pushing that hard into the German land. Like, usually at this point you'd be overwhelmed, but for some reason they're pushing very light, so... Okay. Do I divide my troops up and actually fight this? Uh, you know what? I have a code of chivalry and honor that even when I'm a dictator, I have to win. So, let's go send our troops over there. I'll divide up half of my troops. I'm gonna send this to 150 death stack to go help out, to go help out on this front. Um, I really don't know, remember where my troops are, but let's see. I'm gonna send those two armies to the front. That should help break up a lot of this men. Once these guys are done sieging, then it'll become a lot easier to tell who my men, who my enemies, and who my allies are. Yeah, the Germans. I, I, Honestly, the Germans aren't going to give up, so I should not give up because, as we know, it's not good to give up. Peace from the Russians. No! 
You guys don't get white terms. You guys get to be conquered by me. Okay? This is how that works. So get so get ready, guys. You guys are going to get conquered. So let's go see. I'm going to go start sending a good amount of my soldiers right here to rally. And from there, we're going to start We're going to start driving back the uh, French. I mean, like I said, they aren't sending too many men in right now, which is weirding. Which is really weird. I, I expected way more from them. Um... You guys right here, all these kind of men, just send up to the front. Um, as far as this goes right here in terms of conquest, uh, it looks generally like the, uh, well, let's see, a couple battles right here are kind of worrying, but still, generally speaking, the Germans are winning, and it seems like I pushed back all of the, uh, um, uh, well, I basically pushed back all of the stupid Russian attacks. And I'm basically pushing them back right there. Having don't know why I'm dying so much on this front because they should have gas attacks capabilities, unless by chance they have defensive capabilities against me. Then, oh, embrace the Polish minority! Yay! The Polish no longer hate me. That's good. That's a good sign. Good sign. Good sign that mutual relationships are soon to be happening. All right. Um, with you guys, I need you guys to quickly go to the front over here, start fighting most of this part. This is where I'm going to stand up most of this army. Okay, we got 63 death stack. What is it mostly comprised of? Mostly comprised of volunteer troops. Alright. As I thought, Germany did give up. It wasn't really going to be too much of a stretch, so... Demobilize? I, I don't really need to mobilize. Okay, and if that's the case, then we don't need to keep you guys. You guys go back over here. Apparently, I also have a new 35 death stack, so I'm actually going to keep it right there. And I'm going to move this down right here, because I need, like, two armies. You guys, I kind of like you guys combined right now, so I'll keep you guys together. Je oh, yeah, and Russia's devoting some of its men to go conquer all of Persia. I swear, I'm just using more of Persia as a buffer state. Like, when anyone tries to conquer, I'm just like, Divulge all your power towards Persia. Divulge all your power towards Persia. So, now that I kind of get a good representation of where, of where my troops actually are. Okay, I'm going to have all my troops. Because I actually do want to make a good sized army. So, we're going to combine them all and start like pushing. We're going to start pushing. We're going to start pushing these Russians back. Basically is all I'm saying. Hey, if you guys, if you guys give up. What? How is. Hmm. I don't get how each one's cost me 200, but okay. Well, if I really had to choose, I'm probably going to choose the one that. Okay. If I'm going to have to choose between which one do I want? Do I want to destroy Russia or do I want to um, do something else? I think a better. I think it'd be much better to get a border state with Ukraine, especially since Ukraine is so big in terms of population. I think Ukraine would be a really good powerhouse, especially used against Russia to help out my goals. So that's what we're going to do. You guys go up there, start pushing back there. Now the Germans, now the Germans, undistracted by the uh, undistracted by the uh, French, are now going to completely destroy them. Uh, we're just going to have to wait a little bit. And yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a wait. Let's see. All you, all you, um, loose men, I want you guys to all combine. So we need to start thinking about this. What do you guys want? No. You guys aren't getting white terms. You guys are getting what I want. Okay, I don't care what you guys think. And probably if I really did want to, I could probably end the war right now. Because Yugoslavia is completely underneath my control. Well, I could probably do one of these things. Uh... Yeah, I could probably do one of these things, but I have a feeling if I do that, then this is going to end the war, and I don't really want to do that. If we're gonna, if we're gonna have a chance, an opportunity in this game to weaken, to weaken our good friends, um, Russia, this is the opportunity. This is the chance we have, and we can't let it go to pass. I know Yugoslavia was just a pretext to go to war, and there probably is better ways of going to war. I'm not going to deny that, but. For all intents and purposes, this is the war that we're going to have to fight. And this is what I believe, personally, we're going to have to do. So let's do this! Um, first off, let's see. How's this army comprised of? Because I really didn't pay attention. 
You know, strangely enough, that's actually not a bad army. I'm just going to like divide it up a little bit. 44, 4, 8, 8, 6, 4, that's not too bad. Uh, let's see. Let's get the other one. Let's see how it also turned out. It turned out pretty well, alright. So let's go send both these guys to the front lines. Start having them push back. Help the Russian, help the Germans conquer the land we need to conquer. Um, and hopefully the Romanians won't be idiots. Of course, idiots are the best. The lights of democracy, the threats of the modern world are many. Communism, fascism, tyranny of all forms. Wait, you're calling us not a tyranny? If the free and democratic name... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Of the world are to survive, they must stand together. Austrian leaders are calling on the governments. You know what? This is the this is the best. If if all governments of non-dictatorships want to unite, let them unite. If they don't, well then don't. Yeah, and it seems like the Germans basically have a good handle over here. Yeah, we're basically gonna crush through these guys at a insanely amount of rate. I mean really no. I mean, once you guys give up, once we have a 100% war score, then I'll start accepting all your demands. But for right now, you guys are basically on lockdown until I get what I want. And there's this guard soldier right here, so I need to figure out which army does not have a guard. It's this one right here. So, actually, you wait here just one second. I'm gonna go put a guard inside your army. And this is the first army we actually have guards in. It's so weird. Guards are such an important and integral part of this game, and I keep forgetting to buy them. I keep forgetting to get them a lot. Alright, you guys go right there. You guys start moving into Russian winter. Oh god, we're, we're invading during the winter, aren't we? Well, at least this is before Russia was really powerful, so we should be very fine. And if not, I think about I think about almost nine tenths of our troops will die in this war. So prepare prepare the coffins. And prepare for your insurance too, because you might go up. Alright, let's see. So, yeah, for the most part, it seems like the, the Russians are just being crushed by the mighty, oh, the hand of, I should say, the... I, I, mostly to say, it's mostly me just crushing through the entire Russian army. I mean, it's really just easy. Alright, they're not really being that much of a threat. So, yeah, we're good. <laughs> Alright. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, Russia's definitely just winning all these. I'm winning my battles easily. I mean, I don't think Russia's really that big of a threat usually, unless they have insanely big amounts of manpower, but right now I'm just crushing through them. Let's see, do we have 93? Ooh, dismantle Germany. Okay, 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 okay. We can't get everything, and I know Germany's gonna be the like major douche here, so I'm gonna try to get what I want. Yes, give me that, and we can end the war. Yes! 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 Oh yeah! Ukraine is formed! Ukraine is formed! Ukraine is formed! Ukraine is formed! So yeah, that that creates a really powerful um, little sub-vassal that we now have to call on to. I think I'm gonna, while I'm going back, I'm gonna start crushing all, a lot of these little tiny armies. Uh, I think most of these armies are still pretty well balanced, so I'm just going to send them all back. But yeah, now that we have Ukraine underneath our midst, um, what that basically means is that... Let me form an alliance with them instantly. What that basically means is that now we have a definitive ally against the Russian bloc. And, and a new definitive ally that should be pretty well advanced, because it already has 90 industrial power. We haven't even done anything to, to like help it out or anything like that. It already has 90 industrial power, so that's really good. Uh, the only sad thing about this is that I did sacrifice my my chance of, I guess, taking over Yugoslavia. But like I said, there's really no point if I didn't really say this, but I kind of implied it that there really is no point in taking this over when I can't take over the real land I want. I mean, this is fine and all, but it's just it's just a prelude, I guess. It's just not what I want. So, anyways. I really also wish that somebody righted Ukraine Ukraine or Romania. When do you guys have to take that land? Because that land is really just annoying to just look at. I mean, seriously, gosh dang, is it so annoying. Okay. And yeah, look at that. Now we got you. 
Now we got Romania, now we got Ukraine on our side, which means they'll probably build up a powerful army. A good amount. I mean, I'm not going to say, like, insanely all-powerful, but at least good enough to where we can start working with it a little bit more. Um, we should actually be working on culture. We should probably, you know, I should probably finish some of this romanticism stuff. I, I forgot about it so much of the game. Surge of communism! Who cares? <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, is the communist going to try to take me over? Because it's going to be really hard, too. I'm a really hard government, and when I don't like you, I definitely kill you. So, state capitalism, I'm more of a st At this point, since we have so much money, I'd rather start building up my own economy. But as I've already pointed out, we don't have the opportunity to choose what reform we want or what party we want anymore because I have up a, up a house based on population and not appointed. So we basically have to just hope that the people that we like are in power and the people we don't like are not in power. It's a, that's sad, especially for a person who's a dictatorship as me. It's sad when you actually have to conform to the people's wishes. I mean, seriously, who does that? Who honestly does that in the world? And let's see. Um, let's see. So, yeah, in Asia, I think it's time for us to actually build a proper army. Because this made me pretty mad that we didn't actually have a good-sized army over here in Asia. So, let's actually start getting this all together. Let's see. How much more do you actually need to make this an even? They just basically... Wow, this is a pretty bad... You know what? I'm just going to delete all the stuff I don't like about this army. Let's delete that, and let's delete all this. Okay, because this is a pretty outdated army. Let's actually build some real soldiers down in Asia. Yeah, Telemkin. Oh my goodness, wow. Okay, seems like the only thing we can build it is in Congo. Okay, well, could we build it in... Hmm... Let's build some in Telemkin. Let's go see. Is there any other place we can also build artillery? Uh, only in Europe. And a lot of places in Africa. We're going to have to start... Again, we're going to have to start using our African provinces more. The only problem is that I can't tell where they are. It really does annoy me. Because I, I know... I know we could probably get a lot of soldiers out of this. But I really can't. You know, screw it. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, gosh. So let's build 13 new... 13 new soldiers right there, and like, yeah, we'll just start with 13 soldiers, and then from there we'll start building up an army out of that. Alright, residency, limited citizenship, I don't care, you can have some rights, but I don't want you guys to have all, because then you guys start getting whiny, and I don't like whiny citizens, I really don't. Let's decrease our population by a little bit, I like that. And, I would want to say that, uh... Oh, my friend just texted me about some about some information I already know, which is kind of annoying because I'm recording right now. I don't really like to be disturbed while I'm recording. Greetings from the Panama Canal! Oh gosh, somebody actually completed it. Who was it? Oh yeah, Britain. <laughs> oh yeah, the whole convoluted part where Britain like took over Panama. I don't remember how that happened, but it's really funny to think of that the United States did not build the Panama Canal. Uh, it's also quite hilarious. I have not been like building any of these kind of ships, but as I, I really don't like to build outdated ships, and these ships are going to become quickly outdated very soon here. That, if you guys are wondering why I wasn't building ships, that was the reason, because it's going to become quickly outdated, like almost instantly. So now that we got, um, okay, I need you guys to go crush, oh wait, is, is Bulgaria not letting me inside the land? Hey, dude, give me military access. Come on, Bulgaria. Yeah, you guys are like my... Limited citizenship. Yay, dividends! Uh, since you guys are like my uh, people of faith, uh, it seems like you guys actually have it under control. Good! I like that. When the vassal actually takes initiative, I love it. But anyways, I'm going to move my troops over here because the next state we're going to be doing to go have some fun with is uh, a good friends of Italia. And why? Because we're going to liberate another country. Because uh, I think the two, the twin Sicilies should come back into this world. So yeah, oh my goodness. And now since we have a lot of infamy and it's time for a uh, little bit of break up time, let's start breaking up some of our, our provinces to give us more time to do stuff. I mean, we could break up Iraq, which would be really funny. You know what? Let's do it. Let's totally break up Iraq. Yes. Succession of territory. Uh, what? Hmm? Yeah. Look at that! Yay! Iraq is over here, which makes absolutely no sense, but... 
Yay! Doesn't really affect us by anymore. We can also make Quick Off, but I remember Quick Off. I don't remember why I conquered them, I just remember I did conquer them, and I thought it was the funniest thing in the world that we conquered them. So we're not going to take them back. I kind of wish there was a way you could sort all the nations that you need to kind of break up. Because this is really complex. Like, I'm trying to... I'm trying to find Persia, but like... Uh... Well, anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.